Hi, let's uh, discuss artificial intelligence decision tree. Actually, this is a second version of the decision tree dedicated to machine learning technologies. In this case, we are covering also a uh, broader topic, which includes uh, uh, artificial intelligence agents and applications. That's why we call it artificial intelligence decision tree. And uh, this was influenced by Microsoft uh, messaging. For example, here you can see that uh, Microsoft AI portfolio contains not only services, which usually covered uh, during discussions about machine learning, and not only by infrastructure, but also by business applications and things like Cartana, a personal agent. Uh, speaking about Azure artificial intelligence, uh, currently messaging is that uh, there are three different areas. There are artificial intelligence applications and agents, uh, separately machine learning capabilities and separately knowledge mining. So this uh, is reflected in the decision tree. So let's just zoom into the decision tree and see uh, general grouping here. First of all, uh, you can see that in the uh, bottom we, we have artificial intelligence and business applications and here we have dynamics uh, 365 artificial intelligence which means that in this case uh, there are few solutions packages included in dynamics which already co contain artificial intelligence capabilities uh, for customer service market insights and sales so uh, point here is that Sometimes you don't need to look into the Azure platform, you just need to look into the business applications, into Office 365, and there are already things, that some capabilities there dedicated to artificial intelligence. Uh, and obviously, second one here is uh, Microsoft 365, which is represented by Office 365 Search, Machine Learning in Power BI. So in Power BI, you have uh, capabilities, you can use Python or R languages to make predictions or to better understand your data sets and also workplace analytics allows to understand uh, things about how different teams work and what changes in terms of teamwork. Uh, speaking about Azure artificial intelligence, so platform as a service, uh, first of all we have knowledge mining, we have uh, second one will be applications and agents. Next one will be cloud. Uh, next one will be machine learning actually. And here it's divided to cloud, artificial intelligence and on-premises artificial intelligence. Uh, and you can see that in cloud we have a lot of different capabilities here. So let's first of all discuss uh, knowledge mining. Uh, obviously, as we discussed already, uh, in Office 365 there are search capabilities. Uh, these are pre-built and this means that uh, potentially you have not so much ways of customizing the uh, results of the search compared to Azure Search, which allows you to create uh, cognitive skills based on different uh, cognitive services APIs. And we will discuss APIs uh, in a few minutes. Uh, and basically we are moving to this topic, uh, applications and agents. So in this case, uh, one of the solutions here, or should I say frameworks, is Azure Bot Service Framework. It allows you, it allows developers to create applications uh, with uh, bot capabilities. And another one is cognitive services, which is uh, pre-built uh, APIs, pre-built services in the area of uh, vision, image uh, analysis, speech uh, recognition, language, search, and also there are custom APIs. Uh, so with custom APIs, you can actually uh, train these APIs with your own data sets, which means that you can uh, tune model to perform better for your specific uh, area of interest for the business. So these cognitive services uh, APIs can be used in Azure Search as a cognitive skills to create 
set of di different ways of enriching the data. Okay, let's now talk about a uh, big topic here, which is machine learning. And first of all, obviously we will focus on cloud artificial intelligence, cloud machine learning. And uh, probably you already know about Azure Machine Learning Studio, which is an uh, environment where you can where you have visual interface to create models, to train models. There are pre-built uh, machine learning uh, algorithms. And then from the same environment, you can actually publish your models and uh, create, publish web APIs for your applications. So this tool is mostly for business users. Developers can, can also use it. Data scientists can use it for prototyping activities. And in this case, you can also use Python and R language in it to create your own scripts. It's not very scalable, so when you need something more advanced, in this case you will use capabilities uh, described here in this area. And uh, first of all, let's discuss how you create models. So there are different tools to create models. I personally prefer to, when I have some type of Python code, I prefer to use Azure Notebooks because it's software as a service and uh, you can kind of create code and document your experiments in the same place. And you can use uh, multiple ways, uh, types of compute, uh, which is described below. Uh, alternatively, you can use Jupyter Notebooks in other places, which is basically here you also use Jupyter Notebooks. You can use uh, code, which is a simplified version of Visual Studio, PyCharm, if you prefer this environment, or Visual Studio, if you are, for example, use it for also for development. And uh, in this case, probably it's a more convenient way to do things. Uh, all of these uh, ways of creating models, describing uh, models, and writing your code, and documenting your code, uh, you can use different types of compute here. Uh, when we talk about data preparation, uh, you can use Databricks, for example, to uh, spin up clusters and then transform data based on different types of data lake storages or blob storage. Uh, also, you can actually use Azure Data Factory environment uh, to, because in this case, you will have visual interface to create data transformation, to transform data. So this is how you're preparing data, data sets for analysis. And then for training and testing, you can use technologies like, again, Databricks, which, uh, which is Spark environment with some collaborative uh, capabilities. So this can be used by multiple data scientists, machine learning engineers to collaborate on the same uh, type of experiment. You can use HD Insight uh, or also data science virtual machine, which actually contains a lot of different tools pre-installed, but also you can use it as a compute. Uh, then let's discuss Azure Machine Learning Service, which is actually an environment where you can create a team data science process. So you can, uh, different teams can publish their models. Uh, you can uh, monitor usage of models, performance, if it's changed, and then you can manage deployments of these models to different types of clusters, containers. Uh, so this is a tool. So I personally position it for myself as a tool for team data science process, which allows you to easily organize process for different, for multiple data scientists. And also it contains monitoring capabilities and it's kind of self-documenting environment. So when you have your uh, data science model, you can uh, publish the image into container registry, register the model. And then uh, when you we talk about deployment, you can use uh, different ways of deploying do Docker containers as uh, Azure Container Instances, Azure Kubernetes Service, Azure Batch. You can also deploy your model uh, into IoT, using IoT Edge to your IoT Edge devices which you can see here. Speaking about uh, Azure infrastructure, there are, you, you can use different types of uh, resources to deploy your uh, models. You can use uh, traditional CPUs, graphical processing units, and also FPGAs, uh, which is hardware accelerated units. Uh, so obviously, when you use FPGAs, uh, it will be more efficient. Uh, when you use CPUs, it will be more flexible. And Actually, this, is a, this area is covered by IT usually. 
Okay, so last topic here, speaking about machine learning, will be on-premises machine learning. And in this case, we already discussed that you can, that you can deploy um, machine learning experiments, models to edge devices, different types of edge devices. Also, there is a cap new capability, which is called cognitive services containers. It allows you to deploy uh, APIs from cognitive services directly to on-premises environment. Uh, it can work offline for some time and uh, one point here will be that uh, capabilities are limited so you cannot do this with all of the APIs and sometimes capabilities of APIs will be limited compared to what's available in the cloud. There is also SQL Server machine learning services. Uh, so in SQL Server you have machine learning engine which allows you to create code using Python or R language and uh, in this case advantage will be that uh, data is already in the database and uh, IT can manage access to the data sets uh, but uh, data scientists can actually create their models and uh, test their models in the same environment. Uh, on, on top of the same data set. So advantage here will be manageability. And obviously uh, on premises you can also deploy different uh, types of clusters like Hadoop, Spark clusters. Uh, disadvantage here will be that uh, it will require separate equipment and effort to deploy everything. So obviously uh, it's much better, much more convenient to do things in the cloud because it's more flexible. So this is how uh, I describe uh, artificial intelligence use, using decision tree, or should I say mind map. Uh, so as uh, let's reiterate, we discussed artificial intelligence and business applications in Office 365, uh, separately knowledge mining capabilities, separately applications and agents. And then a big topic of machine learning, we discussed on-premises and also in the cloud. And obviously in the cloud you have Azure Machine Learning Service, which allows you to organize team data science process. And then you have all of these different tools to create your models. Um, currently you can also do this in Machine Learning Studio, which also allows you to deploy uh, models. But if you, use more you need more advanced capabilities, you use Machine Learning Service, and then you can uh, deploy it in multiple different ways using all of these capabilities here. Please let me know if, if I forgot something, if there are some solutions which will be important to have this in this uh, decision tree, which intent of this decision tree is to show most important technologies and also how you decide which one to use. Uh, on the right side, you can see also that I tried to uh, kind of represent different roles, which uh, will be using these tools more often compared to other people. Uh, so please feel free to leave comments below and let me know if you have any ideas of how I can improve this. And see you next time.